It's Friday the 12th of May. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And yesterday on the 11th at about 4.20 p.m., young Orion and I were working on the RV-12 project in the Blanco Lirio Husky hangar at Nevada County Airport when his old iPhone right here sounded off an alarm that I'd never heard before, kind of a grrrt sort of alarm. And I said, what the heck is that? And he picked it up and looked at it and it's, and he said, earthquake. And about the time he got done saying earthquake, bam, the earthquake in Plumas County hit our hangar here at Nevada County and shook it pretty good, rattled it pretty good. And the door was open. We went around and looked outside to see if we could see any further motion but there was no further motion. Uh, in years past, during the Orville earthquakes back in 1975, I was able to look down the road and see the whole road undulating like this, but that wasn't the case for this earthquake. So we turned to the USGS map to find out where this earthquake was located, but that's the first time I've ever seen a real-time earthquake warning delivered via the cell phone system, and was pretty incredible technology. <music> For more information on this RV-12 build, uh, check out James Good Aircoop TV channel. We're getting some young kids exposed to how to build airplanes. So looking on the USGS map, we found the earthquake centered right here on the south shore of Lake Almanor, located about 65 miles north from us, a 5.5 on the Richter scale earthquake located right there. And then last night there was, well, there's been a number of earthquake since, as there typically is. And then last night there was another strong one, 5.2, which we felt here in Grass Valley as well. Lake Almanor, located 65 miles north of us at the north end of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. The Sierra Nevada mountain range kind of peters out by the time it gets up here, but it's located just south of Mount Lassen, a volcano that last erupted back in 1915. Unlikely that these two are related, but they are very close to each other. So there's a great overview of this earthquake here on the USGS page, including this, uh, well, did you feel it map where you can interact with the USGS and tell them what you felt and where you're located. And this interactive map here that shows the intensity based on the range from the epicenter of this earthquake. So if we go look around Lake Oroville, for example, and zoom in, if I can get my super mouse to work, there it is. It's down to about three and a half on the Richter scale near Lake Oroville. And it's down to about three on the Richter scale here at the global headquarters. So one of our favorite riding destinations up here in the Lake Almanor area is the Plumas Pines Resort and Bar located right here. They were getting ready for a big fishing tournament when this earthquake hit. A quick look on Facebook and sure enough they captured it live or as it happened on their security camera. But the earthquake knocked the cameras out of service as soon as it hit. Check it out. So I got this on a continuous loop. They're just getting the bar all set up for the big fishing tournament. All the liquors in, all the glasses set. And then this earthquake hits. And of course, they were just devastated by the Dixie Fire, the million acre Dixie Fire that surrounded Lake Almanor just a couple years ago. Check out the motion of that earthquake. For example, she's sitting here working at the bar and just about <laughs> gets knocked right off her bar stool there. Check out the Pina Colada. It's going to go for a loop. Ready, set, go. Something comes flying off the shelf over here. And the fellow on the cell phone, he barely even moves. And it looks like she got bumped by the cash register. So pretty close to the epicenter, pretty hard motion from this uh, 5.4 earthquake. So back onto their Facebook page, you can see some of the damage here. <laughs> a 
The liquor was spilled on the barroom floor and the mouse crept out for the night. Looks like a lot of it was saved. A lot of plates, a lot of, a lot of glassware down. Clean up on aisle three. As you can see, earthquakes happen around here in the North State quite frequently. That's why we have such strict building codes and why it's so expensive to build here in California, one of the many reasons. And if we look at the historic fault lines here in California, the red being the most recent activity, followed by orange and then historic stuff in black, there's the giant San Andreas fault going all the way from north of San Francisco down to Southern California. That's the big one that we're all watching for here in California. But up here in Lake Almanor, it looks like we have a couple of fault lines moving th right through the area where this earthquake occurred. They're calling that the Almanor Fault. And there's some of the specific data on that fault. And there, it looks like it runs into the Skinner Fault Line right there. And here's the Kitty Ridge, Kitty Ridge Fault Line lo located right here. I was up over the Lake Almanor area back in April in the 310. Uh, we're looking kind of to the south, kind of parallel to those fault lines run along this way. And that epicenter of this earthquake was right down in here. There's the airport, Chester Airport, on the north end of Lake Almanor. A couple of interesting factoids about Lake Almanor. Lake Almanor was formed in 1914 when the Great Western Power Company, which later became PG&E, dammed up the North Fork of the Feather River of the area previously known as Big Meadows. But the name of the lake was derived from the three sisters of Guy C. Earle, who was the president of the Great Western Power Company at the time, Alice, Martha, and Eleanor, thus Lake Almanor. Could this have anything to do with the huge snowpack and runoff this year in the mountains? Hard to say, but the reservoir elevation has risen about 100 feet in Lake Almanor over this season and had some of the largest inputs of water oh, late last month, early this month, right about in this time period here. There's seismographs located uh, near Oroville Dam to monitor the situation there. And here's what the data looks like from Oroville on the earthquake that happened yesterday afternoon at about 420. And here's the data from last night's earthquake. So I mentioned the rise in water at Lake Almanor and Oroville because back in 1975, the strongest earthquakes we felt here were apparently created by the water in Lake Oroville. And here's the, the current theory on this. And this is part of the reason why they put a seismograph at Lake Oroville to monitor the seismic activity of Oroville Dam, especially as they filled the lake. This is an article from the Berkeley Seismology Lab back in 2017. Every piece of rock underneath our feet contains some water in its pores, the little sometimes microscopically small voids between its mineral components. When extra water gets into these rocks, the pore pressure inside rises, ever so slightly increasing the distances between the mineral components. However, if the rocks are crossed by a dormant fault, the increase in pore pressure decreases the friction along the fault and may allow an earthquake to happen. So these are a uh, slip strike or the different kind of fault plate movements that create these earthquakes. And if you can decrease that friction, you can allow that those plates to move a little easier. Engineers building the Oroville Dam wanted to know if such seismicity would occur behind their dam as well when they filled it up. The reservoir was first filled to capacity in July of 1969 and nothing happened for nearly six years. That suddenly changed in June 28, 1975 when a magnitude 3.5 earthquake occurred south of the lake. During the month of July, it was followed by almost 20 minor shocks in the same region until a magnitude 4.7 earthquake hit on August 1st, and that was followed by a 5.7 quake, and boy, do I remember those. Those were felt good here in the Grass Valley area. And that's when I saw the Brunswick Road undulating like this and the power lines whipping back and forth. 
This earthquake was felt in a large part of Northern California and even Carson City, Nevada. The quake caused light damage to buildings in the city of Orville, but left the dam untouched. Another month or so, and the earthquake swarm subsided. So why did it take so long for this seismic activity to occur here at Oroville? The theory is that during the winter of 74-75, kind of like now, large amounts of water were released from the lake to make room for the snow melt in the spring of 1975. During the spring, the lake refilled very quickly. The theory is that the rapid change in hydrostatic pressure somehow affected the dormant fault south of the lake. So very interesting earth mystery as to why these earthquakes occur. We're just barely beginning to understand the science behind it all. It's very fascinating. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. Hang on to your liquor. <laughs>